Hello. Hey guys, how's it going? Everyone to the front. Everyone to the front. It's like an old punk show. Everyone to the front. Come on. Everyone to the front. Here we go. How's it going, guys? Good, good. What are you waiting to uh, ask your pastor for permission or something? This isn't night church. You're not coming to night church right now. My name's Jim. I'm kicking off the show in a raucous fashion, as I want to do. Thank you for coming here tonight. You could be anywhere. And you're here. Hey, how's it going, guys? Come on in. Sit up front. We're not going to pick on you. Promise. Well, yeah. So, how's everyone's week going? Going good? Yeah. All right. Good, good. Um, I would be remiss if I didn't say my girlfriend and I are engaged. Woo! In battle. Constantly. <laughs> it never ends. I suppose it's my fault. I did kind of start it. Um, do this sometime. Uh, when you're sitting next to your loved one, say, I love you. You know, when you're eating pizza or whatever. And, uh, oh, I love you too. And you go, oh, hey, wait, wait, let me finish. I love you, pizza. Yeah. It's okay. I was just getting her back. She uh, woke me up the other morning and said, I had a dream about you. You were my hero. I'm like, sweet. This is going to be a good one. I actually kind of want to hear this one. Go. And she said, well, we were at Burning Man. And my old boyfriend, who was really mean to me all the time, was there. I'm like, sweet. Did I, like, kick his ass or hurt his feelings real bad or something? She said, no, you uh, unclogged the toilet. Yep. In a dream where I could be anyone, I could be a, I could be a superhero doing the thing I've always wanted to do, which is just stack people who go to Burning Man like cordwood, just stack them up. I could be doing that at Burning Man. It's a dream. You can do whatever you want. Uh, make me handsome. Something. <laughs> no. I know. I'm, I'm strikingly good looking. I appreciate you to keep your hoots and hollers down. <laughs> but um, I, li I do like superheroes. I like, um, let's see, I like Superman, but old Superman. When one guy would go, Look, it's a bird. And the other guy goes, look, it's a plane. And the third guy goes, no, it's Superman. Also, you were way too fucking excited to see a bird. <laughs> or like uh, the Incredible Hulk, but the old one from the TV show, where uh, he drifted from town to town. But don't get him angry, because his clothes will get all tattered, and he'll kill somebody. No, you just described a drifter. That's just a homeless person. That's just what they do. And it's not a superpower, dude. It's called alcoholism. You need to get a program. <laughs> oh, I guess that's pretty much all the new stuff I wanted to do for you guys. Thank you for being here. I really appreciate it. We have a special surprise for you tonight. Stiker was not able to make it, but we have an amazing fill-in by way of San Francisco. He's my new best friend, Mike DeBay. Mike, come on out, buddy. Welcome to the colored portion of the show. Uh, by friend, he means a business partner in a drug transaction. That's what everybody comes to Reno for, right? I didn't come to tell jokes. I came to Reno to learn how to be a better criminal. <laughs> this is a training ground. <laughs> Good and bad criminals. This is a great, this is America. This is America at its finest. I've seen three pregnant women smoking cigarettes walking down the street <laughs> since I got here, and I've only been into the city for like an hour and a half. Like, and like I could tell, like one just a beginning bump, big bump, and one like ready to pop. Just swaddling down the street, sucking on a Newport. I was like, oh, this place is awesome. I can't sleep here. I was like, I got to find some Adderall. I don't want to go to sleep. I might miss something. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm not here that long, so I, I think I can do it. I can power through the weekend. <sighs> There's a fire uh, station across the street, and that's funny to me because I used to be a pyromaniac. 
I was <laughs> I've never talked about this. I used to build bombs in the garage. Uh, first it started with my mother's nail polish removable because it was this flammable of sort. There was an acetone base and it would do this pretty blue glow in the sink. And I was like, this would look good, but bigger. <laughs> so I moved to the garage with plastic bags inside of plastic bags and like toilet paper as a, like a delayed fuse system. Oh man, I was ill as a young kid. But like shit happened to where I couldn't like effectively be a, a safe a power maniac and like, you know, get away with it. Like, okay, one time I burnt my mother's bed up and not while she was in it. Just like I was I was in trouble for something and I was sitting in the corner, so I ain't have shit on me but some matches. And it was like, you know the little the, the string they use for the bed, the mattress. Is uh, it's not actually string. It's like a plastic filament of some sorts, and it come unravel. So I just lit it, and I didn't know that it was like a fuse with no dynamite. It just, <laughs> it just fucking started sizzling and went straight up under the bed. And the bed was the fucking dynamite, cause. <laughs> but I put it out without much fanfare. My mother. She knew I got burnt something in her room, but she didn't know it was her bed because it went up under the bed, so she didn't see it. And she was heavy. She never looked up on her bed. <laughs> and then my house burnt down. Now listen, I did not set the house on fire. I actually didn't have anything to do with the house being on fire. I was in my mother's room on the phone with some chick while my other two brothers watched porn on her big screen. And my brother turned to me and said, hey, man, you cooking something? Because it's burning. And I was like, yeah, I, I'll go check in a minute. Can you can stop looking at them people fuck and go check yourself? <laughs> wow. This is the first time I've told anybody any of this. But I feel we're so close. <laughs> I came to Reno just to, you know, not to tell jokes, but to, you know, do drugs and, and just tell my life story. Actually, the house caught on fire by itself. I guess it got tired of like me trying to show it up or some shit. My house was a better pyro than I was. It was like, oh yeah, oh yeah, kid. It was an electrical fire and it just so happened to be laundry day. So there was just a pile of clothes right up under an outlet and sparks magically jumped out of the fucking on top of my new, I bought a fuck, I had just bought a football coat for my fucking football team. It was in the dirty clothes because I had took this girl virginity during a basketball game and she was bleeding. So she had to wear the coat around her so no one would see it because she liked to wear white pants. <laughs> and it got on my coat. It was so white and red and Freedom Middle School stars. I'm glad that coat burnt up. <laughs> That's probably why it was a fire. <laughs> oh, y'all made me feel real good. Thank you. I haven't been able to tell nobody that because it's always a pressure to perform. <laughs> you guys are just like, go ahead, get naked. I'm like, all right. Thank you. So what do you guys do? Word, word, I can dig that. When, when shit hits the fan, I'm coming to find you when I'm in Rio. <laughs> like, cause you know this city is already like the stage right before Raccoon City and fucking. <laughs> it's like the pre-level in some fucking apocalyptic virus Holocaust setting. Like, there's a nuclear base here nobody knows about. <laughs> I like it, though. I just want to take pictures all fucking day of chicks smoking cigarettes in the stages of pregnancy. 
what do you, hey, you, you, you criminal? You're a criminal? You got on shorts at nighttime. That's a real criminal, leisurely thing to do. It's like, I have no worries. I have no cares. I'm not covering up my shins. I'll kill you. <laughs> I'm just playing. Are you a criminal? It's not cool. It, I mean, it's cool. That cargo shorts. Yeah, you keep the ammo. The yeah, I know all about that. You see the boonie cap. I know I look like I just got back from Nam. But I didn't. I didn't. Uh, no, it's cool if you're a criminal. I think, you know what? I think as an American, you should strive to be a, a better American by being a better criminal. Think, think about that. America was founded by criminals, for criminals, and being currently maintained by criminals. So if you're not being a criminal, you're really not living the American dream. <laughs> think about that. The shitty criminals, yeah, they, they put the shitty criminals in jail, but the best criminals they put in public office. Those motherfuckers are the best. They sell more drugs, kill more people. This country's the greatest. The greatest motherfucker. The Kennedys were bootleggers. <laughs> Who has kids in here? Nobody. I can't. Yeah, nobody has kids in Reno. What, they don't have dogs either. I got, you know I'm happy though, because like in San Francisco, where I live right now, they don't have kids either, but they treat all their animals like their children. So it's just a bar full of stupid people in stupid clothes talking to their dogs. And it's just like, what the fuck are you doing? That's a dog, not a baby. No, no, this is my baby. Is... No, no, if that was a baby, they'd take it away from you, because this is a bar. <laughs> Babies don't belong in bars, lady. Or dude. <laughs> I just want to, ugh. Just leave your dog at home. He's 37 years old. Leave him at home. Like the rest of the dogs his age. Let him watch Frasier. He doesn't like it. He doesn't like it. He doesn't like it. It's just getting to the point where I just want to put on an old Falcon and Michael Vick jersey and just walk around the city and just talk to nothing but the dogs. Fuck, ignore all their owners. Just like, you're a good boy, aren't you? Yeah, show me your fighting stance. Yeah. Got a wonderful coat. <laughs> What are you doing, Andrew? That's what's up. That's my friend Andrew, Jesus head. I call him Jesus head because he looks like white Jesus by the head. The picture of white Jesus that my grandmother kept on her wall until one February when I won the Jack and Jill Black History Month contest and was like, nah, man, we got to at least put up a fake black Jesus because <laughs> fake white Jesus is bumming me out, granny. <laughs> My friend Jesus here. They call me Donkey Man. I don't know why. I was high that day. It was probably one of the days, like, yo, I, I'm not even supposed to be still in San Francisco. I'm, I, I came to smoke some weed and do like a couple of shows, and my friend Andrew, Jesus head, and another Andrew was like, hey man, you want some mints? And I was like, yeah. And they didn't tell me they had acid on them, so I ended up climbing a prefabricated mountaintop, staring through the sun, watching my soul go supernova on the other side <laughs> with the freshest breath on the mountaintop. <laughs> and then when I climbed down, I danced with the trees for about an hour because they had fat asses. Usually I smoke them, but a tree with a fat ass, how you not dance with that? And then I watched this kid with, he, with his parent, you know, his, his father was there, and he was putting him on his pile of walk, rocks and making him climb down. And I just started crying. He was crying because he didn't know how to get down. I was crying because, shit, my father, my stepfather was on crack, so he put a pile of rocks out there too. I, I'm sure glad I navigated my way off of that. <laughs> I was never on crack. <laughs> and then like when I got off that fucking mountain I got a job I realized I was handsome and I stopped drinking 
I was like, fuck, I should have been doing drugs a long time ago. Fuck Nancy Reagan. I could have been a fucking astronaut by now, some shit. And I got a job. You don't even know what it's like for a person like me to have a job. You might, because I know you're a real talented guy. You just, you're hiding it behind your superb stocking skills. I know you are at the grocery store. I don't speak employee, so it's difficult for me to like work in places with fluorescent lights and cubicles and shit. Cause like after the first week of being there, I'm looking for the, like the highest paid person to offend, to get let go like in the greatest fashion. You understand? Like, like I worked at this fucking law office one time. New story, never told it before. The head partner's wife was like his secretary, but not his secretary. I guess he just wanted somebody that he could fuck in his office and not cheat, so she had a job there. She's a very fashionable lady. Always wore the nicest shoes and cutest skirts, but she had varicose veins in her legs that looked like, you know, the maps on Zelda. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, that was so fucking epic. I pulled, I, just, I pulled Zelda out of my ass for no reason. I ain't even like that game. I was talking about Viracos Vines. Don't mind me. I smoked a layer cake joint before I got up here. Yeah, yeah, with wax and all that other shit because I believe in marijuana. I believe in marijuana, that is the only politician like y'all I'll ever like, you know, cast my ballot for. I don't vote, but if I did, I'd just walk in there and burn a hole on the ballot with a joint and walk out. <laughs> you know where I stand? <laughs> in a cloud of smoke. Oh man, the cabaret. We still ain't found out what you do. What kind of criminal are you? Are you in your white, you might be white collar. That's, that's why you got shorts on at night. You wear a suit all day. You wear a suit and you trade stocks and bonds. The breast criminals, the breast criminals. <laughs> I know some breast criminals. Did this microphone ever leave the stand? Or did I put it back in there at some point? Oh, word, okay, okay, word, all right. Yo, I'm here and I, I won't be here. Does that happen to you often? You'll be in the middle of some place and then like, no, 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 this is the Serengeti and I'm watching some hunter get mauled up close and personal. <laughs> it's beautiful, man. The other day I watched a clip. My favorite thing to do is to like watch uh, cat clips in between like really big cat clips. <laughs> you know, like whatever clip of the week it is of a really cute cat and then of a really big cat doing some really big cat shit. <laughs> I see it was like these like five Australian hunters this week. Oh, my two. The little cute one. So there's these two cats, one sitting on the top of a refrigerator, and he's just doing like whatever he's doing, looking at some shit, and then out of nowhere, this cat comes out of the fucking cabinet and knocks the shit out of him and goes back in. Beautiful. Watched it. I don't know how many times, at least a joint and a half got burnt between me rewinding this shit. And then I watch these hunters out in the fucking Africa somewhere shooting across the field. They don't really know what they're shooting, and out of nowhere, this fucking cat just leaps and bites this motherfucker in the middle of the chest. <laughs> ah, ah, get it off. No, 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 no. <laughs> You're in its house. <laughs> Take this one. Take this one for the team. 
They killed it, but I was so proud of that Jaguar or whatever the fuck that was. I was like, you went out like a G. God damn, I, oh. That's what you like to see, because usually you don't get to see that shit. You just see the, the picture them posted up beside it and shit. I was only only supposed to be up here for, for five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what happened. I don't know if it got me. Is that, is that? <laughs> I, I'm gonna, okay. Thank you. That's the light word. All right, so look. It's been fun. But I gotta go because I'm starting to get emotional. When I get emotional, I start cooning. So I'm gonna leave on a positive note. Fuck your dreams. <laughs> no, I mean that in the most positive way possible. You see, your dreams are like a beautiful prostitute in Reno. <laughs> you gotta fuck the shit out of her so she remembers your name. I'm Michael DeBay. Michael, everyone, keep it going. Oh, right on. I know, we know, we know Reno sucks, but you're going to Carson tomorrow, so. It's going to Carson tomorrow, where the real criminals live. That's where our state capital is. Boom! Geography, you ignorant motherfuckers. All right, just trying to. Have a good time. Anyway, uh, sorry. So this next fellow, he's been here before. And who here has seen him? Round of applause. Can't really see hands. Who here has seen Andrew before? Andrew Holmgren. He's great. You're going to love him. If you don't want to have sex with him when he hits the stage, just wait. Just wait till the end. Just wait till the very end. Everyone's going home with Andrew. Everyone's going home with my friend and yours, Andrew Holmgren. I didn't ask for that introduction, um, but it was pretty good. Uh, hello, everybody. Welcome. Welcome to me. Ah, it's good to be here. Uh, excellent. It's having a good time. Um, recently had a birthday. Thank you very much. Recently had a birthday. Actually, you guys like my shirt, first of all? Yeah. It's a pretty sweet shirt, right? Yeah. Hell yeah, give it up for this shirt. It's a new shirt. Just got this shirt very recently. Even more recently, came into the understanding that this is, in fact, a lady's blouse. And uh, here's how I discovered this. The buttons are on the other side. I didn't know that men and women's clothes had buttons. That button on the opposite side and as I've been walking around with this shirt, like it blows open like way more than my men's shirts do. And I realize like they're designing women's clothing to expose their bodies when they go outside. And it's, uh, that's just the fucking system, you know? It's keeping them down. But uh, yeah, and you guys may be wondering, Andrew, how did you not know that the shirt that you were getting was a woman's shirt? And uh, well, it's because I found it on the ground. So. Uh, <laughs> New shirt, ground score. Yeah, uh, but I had a birthday. Uh, I turned 26 years old. Very exciting to be still alive. Um, turned 26, and really how I would describe it is that I'm currently raising a 26-year-old. <laughs> and uh, spoiler alert, it is not going well. Uh, was not ready for this responsibility. Like, let's put it this way. Like, if I wasn't myself, Child Protective Services would have taken me away from me by now. They would be like, you are an unfit yourself. You don't get you to be, and I think that's prison, but they haven't caught me yet. So, uh, still out on the streets. Um, yeah, I don't know. I probably wouldn't have kept it if it was up to me, but, uh, you know, or just like drop it off at the fire station. 
be raised by the firefighters. I assume that's what happens when you drop a baby off at the fire station. It, it, it's just, it has 18 dads, and it's just raised to be a firefighter. That's where firefighters come from, or like, you know, some of them go to the academy. Some of them are just born into the, the fire. Or they become strippers, you know, either or, they're raised around poles. But, uh, yeah. Like, I don't know how to own and operate a human body. Uh, I guess some people know how to do that. Uh, apparently adults stretch. I didn't know people stretch past middle school. Um, like, in the same sense that people who don't trust auto mechanics because they don't know how their cars work, like, they think they're always just, like, making up it's like, oh, I, all the filters, Tony, like, fucking Tony, you know, like, that, like, in that same sense, I don't trust doctors, because I know so little about my own body that they could be making anything up, you know? Like, it's like, oh, really, doctor? I gotta get my appendix removed because it's ruptured? <laughs> yeah, you've been telling me that for two months now. And uh, the pain has only gotten slightly more excruciating. You know, you get doctors, they think they're so great, you know, like, I'm sure you guys have had this experience, you go to these doctors, these fancy doctors, and they just think they're so smug, you can just see it on their face when they come in, because they, they're a doctor, they're so much better than you, they're looking, to, ooh, I'm a fancy doctor, and I went to medical school, and I say rectum instead of butthole, and, you know, you can afford to buy stuff, and it's like, yeah, well, you're still going to have to touch my balls, all right? Uh, that's the key. Guys, every time you go to the doctor, you got to figure out a way to get your nuts touched. It is not difficult to do. They have to do it. I go to the doctor three times a week. I am perfectly healthy. And uh, it's because, realistically, that is your only recourse uh, against uh, you know, the egregiously high cost of medical care in this country. Just got to get the doctor to touch your balls. Like they know, they're like, Andrew, you're fine. We touched your balls two days ago. And you're like, yeah, but I think they're haunted now. There's ghosts in there, and they got to put the glove on, or not, you know, either or. Check, you know. Checkmate, fucking doctors, you know. They're like, oh, I, I have a special prefix for my name, because I did extra school and paid extra money. I'm doctor. It's like, no, you're professional, my ball toucher, all right? All I'm saying is that if you're going to fuck my wallet, you gotta play with my balls first. All right, get some foreplay. The customer is always right. That's right. Hell yeah. That's what this country was founded on. That's what the flag should say. The customer's always right. That's like the most American sentence probably ever. Uh, and it's led to a lot of very ignorant uh, interactions with customers. Because they're not always right. They're almost always wrong. Uh, as someone who's worked with customers, almost always wrong. Uh, all right. It's great. Uh, let's see. I'm uh, single. Thank you. Yeah. Single person. Uh, it's great. I've uh, been single for a couple of years now. Did not enjoy it at first. I don't think anyone really does. But I've come to embrace it. I've come to accept it. Even enjoy it. I've come to recognize that it affords me a lot of freedoms. Uh, lets me get into a lot of weird shit, things I wouldn't otherwise be able to get into. Uh, I was recently intimate with a woman 23 years my senior. Thank you. Uh, yeah. So, uh, okay, so I realize there's no way to say this without sounding like a total scumbag. I'm involved in a contest with a friend of mine for the 2015 calendar year to see who can have sex with the oldest lady. All right, uh, it's a weird contest because if you win, you really lose, you know. Uh, but also, I just want to say, when I say that, I sense some judgment in the room, and I'm just saying that is on you. My personal belief is that anyone of any certain legal age should be allowed to get their parts touched by anyone of any other certain legal age that they choose to. I am an equal opportunity part toucher, and it is my solemn wish that everyone in this room gets their parts touched well into their 90s. So. Uh, you know, in a manner of speaking, go fuck yourselves. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I'm in this contest. And uh, the bar is currently set at 51 years old. I am not in the lead. I'm in second place.
But I did meet up with the lady, the aforementioned lady, a uh, nice lady. We met up through a lesser known online dating site called cougarlife.com, uh, which is a real thing. And so, uh, okay, so as far as I remember, this lady's profile says that she's 53 years old. You know, perfect, right? Bars are 51, she's 53. Like, I know it's early in the year, but, you know, it's good to be in the lead, right? You don't know what's going to happen. Maybe anything could happen. Maybe somebody breaks a leg, gets a girlfriend. Boom, they're out for the season. Early score in April carries on through to January. Uh, I'm 2015's old lady banging champion. You know, that's how I say it playing out in my head, at least. And so I meet up with this lady, and uh, real nice apartment. Like, I felt kind of out of place. So this, like, I felt really fancy. Like, real nice apartment. It was a high-rise apartment, San Francisco, downtown financial district. You can see the lights of the Bay Bridge from her balcony. And like, this lady's got a balcony. I don't have a window. She's got a fucking balcony? Like, this place is nice, you know? Like, I feel like I got past some sort of security that was meant to, like, prevent me or people exactly like me specifically from like getting into this place like I feel like I should have showed up and some guy would have been like hey wait a second show me your bank account and I would have had to be like I don't have one <laughs> get out of here kids skateboard away you don't get our old ladies today uh, not so he's on a smoke break or something so I get in and it's afterwards I'm not here to share the details with you guys, but it's afterwards, and uh, we're sitting on her couch, basking in the afterglow, catching our breath, reflecting on this moment that we shared. And uh, she turns to me and she says, "So, remind me again, how old are you?" And I was like, "Oh, I'm 25 years old." And she kind of freaks out. She's like, "Oh my God, that is way too young. I cannot believe you're that young." If I had known you were that young, I would never have agreed to do this today. That is way too young. I'm sorry. And it's like, I mean, you know, it's already happened, right? You can't take it back. I'm sorry you feel that way, right? You can't put the jizz back in the balls, you know? There's no, like, Twinkie injector syringe device to reverse sexual encounters. Can't spoon it back in. You know, I got to have some sort of pressure behind it. But, uh... You know, what's done is done, but I just want to now confirm that I'm in first place with this 53-year-old woman. So I say, you know, I don't want to be rude, uh, but remind me, how old are you again? And she says, oh, I'm 48 years old. And I was like, oh, my God, that is way too young. If I had known you were that young, I would never have agreed to do this today. Uh, I feel like a pedophile. Well... Yeah, I'm in second place. Uh, although I am now Eskimo Brothers with Greg Allman of the Allman Brothers Band. So, you guys are witnessing rock and roll history here tonight. I'm one of the remaining Allman Brothers doing comedy. Uh, all right, I got to come clean. I can't lie to you guys. She didn't go all the way with Greg Allman. He just went down on her after a concert 28 years ago. So, it's like I got to make out with Greg Allman through a wormhole. You know? Yeah, gross, 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 gross. Uh, surprisingly juicy mouth for his age. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, gross, gross. Yeah, I'm a single person. And uh, it's always interesting being a single person, like meeting new people, putting yourself out there, learning each other's interests, each other's preferences, who's compatible with what and stuff. And, you know, I think the... First time you're with someone, I think it's always a good idea to talk about it, like your sexual preference. Like, what are you into? Get like a little bit of a roadmap or some cliff notes for the experience, you know? Just get a good start. You know, know what you're up against, you know? Like, there's such a broad spectrum. Like, what do they want? Do they, they want to, like, gentle and intimate or passionate and aggressive? You know, like, where, where do they lie on that spectrum? Just talk about it. I was with a girl for the first time. She didn't want to talk about it, uh, which is fine, you know, again, just figure it out on my own, but uh, obviously you got to start out on that gentle end. You can't just jump off the deep end, but uh, you know, it's, it's beautiful. It's a beautiful afternoon, like sun shining through the window onto the bed, birds chirping in the distance, singing us a song. It's beautiful. And uh, behind her, I'm in a classic canine base position, 
and uh, you know we're experiencing each other's bodies for the first time feeling each other's heartbeat listen to each other breathe like it's beautiful it's a beautiful moment and i'm reflecting on this and while i'm doing that she reaches back and she grabs my hand fingers laced now our hands are hugging each other you know and uh in my head i'm just like oh wow what a beautiful delicate flower princess creature fairy all the delicate stuff you know she's all of them and this is a beautiful gentle intimate moment with a beautiful girl fully fully into this moment you know and while i'm thinking this she be- continues to pull my hand forward until my arm is wrapped firmly around her neck all right, completely changing the dynamic of this situation, uh, which is fine. You know, I've been there before. I know what to do. That's okay. But the problem is I'm over here in this gentle mind state, and I was, like, pretty into that. Now I got to snap out of this all the way over to the other end of the spectrum because she didn't want to talk about it. Now I feel weird, and I'm, like, taken out of the moment, and I feel like I'm in this weird, like, wrestling hold almost. <laughs> And I'm just like trying to, you know, I'm just like, all right, come on, snap out of it. Like, ah, I do this. Ah, and I'm just all in my head. And now I realize 60 seconds have gone by and I've been completely silent. All right, which is fine in that gentle encounter. Like, you don't need to talk. Like, who needs words, right? Our eyes do all the talking. You and me against the world, babe. Like, mental connection, you know? But in that aggressive sexual situation, like, you got to be verbal. You got to let them know. You're, ah, you gotta just be, uh, ah, something like, like it's weird to choke someone in silence. <laughs> All right, like that's that's a creepy situation. Like you gotta let them know that you know that you're choking them, so everyone feels safe. It's like I'm choking you, and they're like, yeah, you are choking me. I feel safe, and now we're all safe and choking each other, and we know what's going on. You know, you got to do that, but I'm, it seems so simple. It just rolls right off the tongue, but in the, I'm just, I'm so out of it that I, I, I can't even muster those words, but I got to say something. I can't let any more time go by, so I just got to say the first thing that comes to my mind, so I just lean in, and I'm like, brother, <laughs> let me tell you something, brother, and uh, yeah, still a single person, yeah. Fuck, yeah, did I, Michael, so Michael told you about how he's Donkey Man and he doesn't know why people call him Donkey Man? Yeah. All right, he named himself Donkey Man, and uh, so that's why. <laughs> we ate drugs, and then he decided that he was writing a TV show on the fly, and I was Jesus Head, and he was Donkey Man. All right, it's not, it's not funny. Uh, <laughs> Right. Um, well, listen, you guys, I've had some good times here tonight. Got some exciting news. Um, something happened just earlier today, and uh, you're the first people I'm sharing this with. I recently purchased some new marijuana. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you, and I uh, appreciate the support. Here's the thing, you guys. I refer to this weed as the Quran. And uh, that's because when you light it on fire, you get stoned. All right, clearly hilarious pun. Uh, no doubt about that. Maybe pun of the year, you know, not for me to decide. But here's the thing. I said that joke at a show, Santa Cruz, California, real hippie, dippy town. You know, uh, they like to think they're hippies. They're really just pussies. But uh, said that, and the guy comes up to me after the show, Kind of in a huff. He looks pretty irritated. And he's like, hey, man, I'm an intellectual Muslim, and I had a problem with your joke. And I was like, I mean, okay, first of all, religion aside, if you hold a grudge over a joke at a comedy show, don't try to tell me you're an intellectual, all right? Uh, That's rule number one. I didn't say that to him. I just thought it, but, uh, you know, we were... We chatted, we made up, we're cool. I even ended up giving him the first hit off my pipe. And uh, as he goes to light it, I started throwing rocks at him. I'm like, you get the joke now, motherfucker. 
Fuck you. Eat a dick. All right. Hey, listen, you guys. My name's Andrew Holmgren. You guys have been great. Enjoy the rest of the show. Give it up for yourselves or whatever. Hey. All right. Andrew Holmgren, everybody. Keep it going. Good job, man. Oh, how's it going, everybody? You guys about ready for the headliner of the evening? Yep. All right. One yep was all I needed. We're going to keep this going. This next gentleman, he is sincerely a super funny dude. You're going to love him. By way of Sacramento, I believe. Uh, you've seen anyone here watch Getting Dug With High? I did say that correctly, by the way. It's a great show. He's a repeat guest on there. You've seen him there. And just stand-up comedy and writing, and he's awesome. Everyone, in Guy Obilum. How are you? Happy Friday night, everybody. You feeling all right? Had a drink or two? Got your drugs balanced? Right? Hitting your secret little vapor pen. Great for casinos. You know what I'm talking about? I'm happy to be here in Reno. Uh, it's been a long week, so it's good to see you guys. Uh, I had a joke, but I forgot it because I'm high as fuck. Uh, but they'll come to me in a minute. Any minute now. I love weed. Anybody else? A pot smoker in the front, that's rare. They're usually in the back because they got here late. Uh, right? Because it takes three to five tries to leave the house when you smoke a lot of weed. You know what I'm talking about? Like, hey, I'm ready. Oh, my key, shit. Okay, I'm ready. To, oh, my money, fuck. Okay, I'm ready. Where are we going? <laughs> fuck it, I got an Xbox. Come over. Right? We'll order a pizza. You know you're high when it takes longer to call for the pizza than it does for the pizza to show up. You know what I'm talking about? All right. I'm a good eater. Uh, I'm also a good cook because I smoke a lot of weed. I don't have any money. I will invent shit to eat. Right? If we got Bisquick and peanut butter, we got peanut butter rolls coming in 12 to 14 minutes. 15 minutes. We're at altitude in Reno. Um, to read the side of the box. I looked at the pantry one time. We had marshmallows, margarine, and top ramen. I'm making ramen treats. <laughs> ramen treats. They were hella good, too. Don't use the flavor packet. That'll fuck it up. It's not savory. You guys know what Top Ramen is, I'm assuming. Yeah. Right. No, hey, listen. Sometimes you get an upscale crowd and shit, they just fucking stare at you like, ramen? Brrr. I had to break it down to a crowd one time. I was like, well, y'all know Cup of Noodles, right? Uh-huh. Well, I can't afford a fucking cup. I'm just trying to get O noodles. There's no dehydrated corn and carrots for me. Just straight hydrolyzed yeast and salt. But it's hella good, right? I have recipes. Ramen tartare. Ramen loaf. Ramen sorbet. To cleanse the palate between ramen courses. Right? I'm poor, but I'm civilized. I have two sets of plastic forks to work from the outside in. It's classy, bitches. Thanks for getting my etiquette jokes. <laughs> or do you yield, sir? What was I talking about? Weed. Uh, weed's still illegal in Nevada, uh, as I found out, thanks to the Elko Police Department. Uh, thank you for following me for 10 miles and then pulling me over because my tags were expired on my rental car. It's a true story. <laughs> Don't tell them I'm here. I haven't paid it yet. Uh, <laughs> it will be legal here soon, though. Right? That'll be the shit. You know what I'm talking about? You could open a do branch. How about, how about a brothel and a medical marijuana club? You could call it a butt and breakfast. A butt, butt, and breakfast. No? Right? Because, come on, weed and sex go together like weed and sex. You know what I'm talking about? Right? I like to incorporate it into the foreplay. Let her hit the joint while I do some shit. Right? Then I hit the joint while she does some shit. Uh, 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 uh. Do the smoky pokey. Do the smoky pokey and you smack that ass around. That's what it's all about. Stick your fingers in. 
It's dark. Take your fingers out. Nobody can see you laughing. We're all adults. Stick your fingers in and you make like a come here. It's like a come here motion like that. There's like a little spongy part right here. You feel for that? Are some of you uncomfortable? Don't be uncomfortable. This can only help. Right? If you didn't know, now you know. Some of you may thank me later. Oh my God, that stoner's a fucking genius. Well, I know, right? We're going to need more towels. Is that too dirty? Do you guys get laid at all? Do you, do you have sex here? No. We just do shots. It's just easier to watch porn. Right? Because it's America. It's very easy to watch porn in America. You can watch porn in your car, on your smartphone, before you go to court. Because you never know what's going to happen in court. Shit might go sideways. Get one last one in just in case it all goes wrong. Unless you're going to court for jacking off in your car or watching porn on your phone, then let it slide one time. Give it a rest. I'll give it a miss. <laughs> but you guys don't masturbate in your car? Really? No? no, come on. That's for when you're out of sunflower seeds and it's a long drive. <laughs> do you guys do road trips here? Or you just, no, we, like, we really like Reno. It's very nice. I've been throughout Nevada. Uh, one time, long, long time ago, very early in my comedy career, my boy Andrew called me up. He's like, hey, man, I put together a tour in Nevada. You want to go? I was like, yeah, man, because I'm figuring like Reno, Vegas, Tahoe, fuck no. We played Elko, <laughs> fucking Lovelock, <laughs> Eli. I'm not shit jackpot, Windover, fucking Winnemucca, motherfucker. That should be their slogan. Shouldn't that be their slogan? Welcome to Winnemucca, motherfucker. <laughs> it would make me want to go. Where y'all going? Motherfucker, Winnemucca, motherfucker. <laughs> right, they should put me on the Chamber of Commerce. <laughs> <laughs> Can you see me? At the you probably don't see me as a member of the Chamber of Commerce. I probably look more like a magical plant teacher at Potworts. Ten joints to Spliffender. <laughs> Bully. I brought my golf clubs. I'm fucking golfing tomorrow if anybody wants to go. Uh, what, what? I'm the only one? I love to golf, right? And we're like a mile up, man. You have the fucking golf ball good. It, that shit will fly. You feel like John Daly <laughs> and shit, right? Mostly because I'm drunk. No, I'm not. I, uh... I smoke weed on the golf course, and nobody says shit. Even in states where weed is illegal, nobody has said shit to me. You could do all kind of crazy shit on golf courses. Every year and a half, somebody gets caught with a hooker and a bag of blow. <laughs> it's true. Look, look, just six months ago, it was like a sheriff. I swear, I swear to God, they're having a party. He's like, I'll be right back. And he went and got some blow and a hooker. It was like, hey, the turn up is real. <laughs> right? So nobody snitches on my bag of weed. Right? And what's he going to say? Nobody cares. He's going to run over to the game marshal or whatever. Hey, that black guy with dreadlocks has a big bag of weed. Yeah, that sounds about right. <laughs> right? It's the golf course. You got a whiskey and a cigar. I got a blunt and a Diet Coke. It's a beautiful day. We're all having a wonderful time. Keep your head down. One time in Sacramento, I got paired up with this random middle-aged dude, right, as me and him on the golf course and shit, and right around the third, white, white dude, and right around the third hole, I pulled out a fat hoot to smooth it out, right, dial it in. I took a couple puffs and shit, did the neighborly thing. Hey, man, you want to hit? No, thank you, but do you have any crack? <laughs> the f what? No. <laughs> and might I add, sir, I find your presumptuousness a bit off-putting. That's how I talk when I'm mad. For real, I'm very precise. <laughs> it's true. I don't want any misunderstandings. <laughs> Secondly, who the fuck smokes crack on the golf course? What the fuck? How does that help your swing? You can't like, I'm like, I'm going to fuck him up. Right drug for the right activity, that's my point. <laughs> right, weed and golf make sense, 
right? Booze and golf makes sense. Crack and golf don't make a lick of sense. You understand? You don't do a bunch of crank and go to a chess tournament, right? You don't eat a bunch of mushrooms and try to run a marathon. <laughs> what do you mean I'm off course? This whole planet is off course, man. I see through your whole thing. Why am I wearing a number? I'm not a number. <laughs> you can't run a marathon on mushroom. It'll take you three days. <laughs> Laughing and crying the whole time. Right? Crying because your feet hurt. And laughing because you're happy to have feet. That's what mushrooms do. They teach you <laughs> the necessariness and the eternity of the yin and the yang. And why must one must always contain a bit of the other. Well, that's what they did for me. You guys probably just danced to some shit. <laughs> do, you, do you listen to music at all? No, oh, I live in a world of silence and podcasts. Oh dear, oh, caught. Caught out. Oh dear, killing me softly with his song. Killing me. Oh, you don't get the allusion to that. Because he doesn't listen to music. Listen, there's only like six of us, so we all have to kind of pay attention as a group. This is all going to be on the final. I feel like I'm doing more like a seminar than a comedy show. Uh, do I have some new jokes? Perhaps. Let's find out. I'm keen to guess. <laughs> I come out and I talk a lot about weed. And people get confused, right? You, you do a lot of drugs. I don't do a lot of drugs. I do a few drugs a lot. There's a difference, right? And I'm also, and here's the thing, man. People do drugs. This is America. They can't stop us. We do drugs. People have fun, right? As long as you handle your shit as a responsible adult. Fucking no puking on people, no fighting girls. Those are my rules. Other than that, fuck it. Nobody does drugs because they're shitty. At first, that part comes later. <laughs> but drug abuse is a social health issue. issue. Social health issue. That's a tough one, actually. I never tried it before. Red lorry, ye red lorry, yellow lorry. She brews a proper cup of coffee and a copper coffee pot. <laughs> I'm a pleasant mother pheasant plucker. The most pleasant mother pheasant plucker to ever pluck a mother pheasant. Drug abuse is a criminal. <laughs> drug abuse is a social health issue. Mm. And I'm scheduled to meet the Beta Z ambassador. I don't know why John Luke Picard sounds like Bill Cosby all of a sudden. That was a weird, <laughs> fucked up. I don't even know why I'm missing that guy's name. He's like Voldemort to comedians now. You can't even bring him up. <laughs> That's kind of funny. Or it did that, or you guys have slightly better weed than what I'm used to. Uh, which is probably not true. So both, both can also be true. They're not mutually exclusive. I'm rambling like there was hash in the joint. All right, look. Um, this is what I'm saying. Like, addiction is not, if we legalize drugs, not everybody's going to run out and become a drug addict, right? If we legalize heroin tomorrow, who's going to go out and get some heroin? Me, right? And then the sound guy. Because he's the sound guy. Uh, me, I'm just a good host. Right? I also have a liquor cabinet. I don't really drink, but if you want to fucking chase the dragon on a Friday night, fuck it. No needles. Don't care. 3% of any given population becomes addicted to something. Right? Whatever it is. Right? Listen, I'm not addicted to weed. I smoke weed almost every day, but I've gone without it for hours and days at a time in certain small Idaho towns, and I've never had any problems. My dreams are a little weird for a night or two, but that's it. <laughs> Right? But you try to take my cigarettes from me and I will stab you in your fucking neck. You understand? <laughs> Pack a day, bitches. Right? And it's expensive because I smoke the fancy organic kind because I'm killing myself the healthy way like an educated adult person. <laughs> and it's $7. Right? $210 a month. $200 a month. Quit. Put the money in a jar. Boom. In a month. $200. $200. For fucking, you could go to Reno or... Tahoe, you could just stay in Reno. Fuck it, you could get a room at the Circus Circus. Listen, you could get hookers and crack. With $200, if you buy $200 worth of crack, hookers will show up. <laughs> and they'll bring cigarettes. 
which is what I really fucking want. Because it's been a month and I'm kind of fiending. I'm cool on the blowjob, but can you leave the Marlboros? Right? That's the nature of addiction. Some people will trade sex for drugs, and I will trade drugs for better drugs that I like more. Some of you are completely with me right now. Some of you just stared at me like trout. <laughs> Talk about your dick some more. Huge. <laughs> you know what they say, once you go black, you're out of the will. <laughs> oh, fourth street, that short street. It's not really, it's a fucking long street. I always get in on, come in on West Fourth and then come through. I don't know why. There's no reason for it. It's just fun. Do you know what I'm talking? You guys, yeah. do you, do you, did you all take the bus here? Good for you. I take the bus a lot. I don't mind taking the bus. All right, cool. How, when do you get your license back? You can't ever get it back ever. Well, just take the bus. Well, thank you for that unprompted testimonial. <laughs> and also for your sustainable mindedness, because it is better to take the bus. I just took the Greyhound today, and I take the Greyhound. I ride the bus, I take the public transportation in Sacramento all the time. Of course, I get stoned like fuck, right? Because there's a lot of weird ass psychic energy on a bus, and you gotta have your shields up at least half. <laughs> you understand? But I also forget that I stink like weed, right? Like, this is my impression of people sitting next to me whenever I ride the bus. Dang, somebody smell hella good. <laughs> I farted. Because I fart kush. And I sweat hash oil. <laughs> I can't play basketball with hippies. Someone always ends up with a butter knife. Quit scraping me, man! <laughs> Dude, you're all resiny. All right, that's true. Fuck it. Time out. We're going to do some knife hits. Yes, I said knife hits because I'm middle-aged. I'm not one of you kids. You do fancy futuristic fucking flame vapor stick or whatever the fuck. When I was a young man, we smoked hash with two knives and a wine bottle, and we were better people for it. Fuck it. Make a fucking vaporizer. Where's my goddamn jet pack? That's what I want to know. Where's my fucking flying car? I can't get a flying car. I smoke too much weed. I have depth perception problems, right? I love weed, but it's not always bong hits and blowjobs, man. I'm sure, I'm sure my near daily use of marijuana for the past 20 years may have kept me from some shit, right? I'm 47, it's too late for me to fulfill my childhood dream of becoming a ninja. <laughs> I tried for a while, I practiced, right? There'd be a big puff of smoke and I'm fucking still standing there. <laughs> shit. But just because it's too late for me doesn't mean it hasn't happened, right? Maybe I don't have empirical evidence, but I have anecdotal evidence of the existence of stoner ninjas, <laughs> right? You ever walk down the street and you smell weed, but you don't see anybody smoking weed? <laughs> stoner ninjas! <laughs> right? I think that would be a cool caper flick. You know what I'm talking about, like a heist movie, right? The CEO walks into the penthouse the office or whatever. Why does it smell like a skunk's been in here? Where are my files? Stoner Ninja. It's like the Mission Impossible theme, but with... It's in 5-4, it's what makes it exciting, creates the tension. Dun, 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 diggity, diggity, dig, slap. Uh, I just ruined that song for you, by the way. Dig, 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 slap, dig, 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 slap, dig, 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 slap, dig, 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 slap, butt slam, butt slam, butt slam, butt slam. It's me in ninth grade. <laughs> True. Nerds. All right. I'm going to tell a few more jokes and then we're going to go outside. International Sign Language. Everybody knows what that means anywhere in the world. 
I just want to get close to you guys because I feel a little. Yes, it means do you have a toothpick? Fuck no. It means let's go smoke a joint, right? Let's go smoke a joint, right? Let me bum a cigarette, right? Y'all know what that one means? It means I'll trade you for some of this. A little bit in there. You guys like, are you a little kinky? Seen the movies, you read the books? No? A little bit? You don't, he's like, ah, it's been so long. I forget who gets tied up. I will tie you up. Not you personally. Well, maybe, I don't know. You're kind of cute. Give me a couple drinks. If you have tits on your back, you definitely have a chance. I'm just saying in general. I know it sounds sexist, but it would be cool if girls actually did have an extra set of tits on their back. Right? For slow dancing and shit. No? Right? You could cuddle and not snore in her ear. Right? She'd never drown. Take your time. Hey, it would be cool if guys had an extra bigger dick on their back. It would be cool if dudes had a dick on their back. I agree. Why not? Well, no. Maybe. It would be it would make a two girl thing kind of weird. What would you do with a dick on your back? How would you Maybe a second dick in the front? Right? Like a rabbit. Right? Like a dick and then like a little clit tickler. We'll probably evolve clit ticklers by the, like another 500 years. Dudes will probably have a little thing because computers have gotten so good at bringing women to orgasm that dudes will finally have some sort of little fucking, and then maybe like a little thumb attachment under their nuts for the shocker. That's what evolution does. In 500 years, all deer will be hunter orange. Duh. There's probably some now, but you haven't seen them. <laughs> Your syllogisms are correct, sir. I don't even know if that was a syllogism. I just made that. All right, a couple more jokes, because really it's getting rambly and thick out here. And I can't see this fucking police helicopter fucking like, that's my mom's car, asshole. Okay, I get it. I, I, I see how you did that. It's like a Daffy Duck sketch. <laughs> Thank you for getting the OG Warner Brothers cartoon lick. Uh, let's see, do I have a couple more new jokes? Probably not. All right. I should write some. Any minute now. Any minute. Right? They were discussing the, uh, the Confederate flag and some Confederate flag people uh, are promoting the slippery slope argument, right? Well, then, are we going to have to rename all the fucking streets, too? Uh, fuck yeah. Why not? <laughs> you guys fucking lost. We get to pick. <laughs> Can I get Michael Jackson Avenue? Can I get George Washington Carver Boulevard? Right? Like, and I would name all the streets fucking Jim General Sherman. This is what I would do. Each street would say... General Sherman kicked your ass. That's how, that's how it would go. Where do you live? I live on kicked. <laughs> the, and the South. I don't, I don't give a fuck. I try to keep an open mind on things, right? Like, I understand that the word nigga has become very popular in pop culture, as long as you say it with an A. <laughs> right? And I understand that maybe you were talking to some of your friends over here and you're kind of drunk and you're white and I'm standing over here. You don't realize I'm over there and you're like, oh, you niggas is tripping, right? <laughs> but I will calmly turn around and be like, hey, listen, I understand the changeable and malleable nature of language and I know you weren't talking directly to me, but I am from a generation that doesn't really like to hear that word, so please watch your mouth before I act like a real nigga around here. <laughs> and usually I'm mad with, oh, yes, sir, right away, sir. I'm so sorry. Yeah. I don't know. I don't, it's not even a joke. It just happened the other day. 
That's all, right? He was drunk. Well, it, it, there's that phrase, uh, white boy wasted or whatever, or white girl wasted. Some people will be like, that's racist. I'll be like, no, that's pretty much a symptom of white privilege. You can get so fucked up. Like, I only can get a little fucked up because I have to keep some wits about me in case some shit happens. Right? Y'all become completely other motherfucking people. Like, everybody's just going to get you home and shit. Which is cool. Trust in the universe. I'm not mad at you. I just think it's an interesting thing. I don't even have a joke about it. Like I said, this is really like a seminar. At the end of this, when I'm done, you guys be like, I think we made some progress today. <laughs> like to pull yourself together in the crying room. See you next week. All right. I'm going to tell some actual joke jokes. And not just some weird discussions about why is Kim Kardashian famous. And everybody goes, because she made a sex tape. But I was like, did you see her sex tape? Because she's not really good at it. Right? I've seen people have sex before. Boring. Right. She's no fucking Ashley Blue. You guys probably like different sex. I like uh, porn stars who fuck like they're off their meds. <laughs> Have you guys ever had sex or watched porn or done? No. No. no you guys just wandered in here like fucking. <laughs> like Third Street was too crowded and shit. You're like, fuck it, we'll come in and then fucking still be on for it. I'm kidding. I really appreciate you coming out. I'm going to tell like two more jokes and then you can smoke my weed. That's good. That's why you're here, to smoke my weed. Right on. Wish I had brought some crack. Um, I'm kidding. Don't anybody go get any crack and bring it back. Like, dude, I heard you wanted some. All right. Uh, Right? <laughs> y'all feel me though. <laughs> I'm glad y'all smell me. <laughs> this, believe it or not, is still fun for me, you guys. That's the thing. Like, I've traveled around, I have played some shitty, 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 shite, shitty, shit, shit, shit rooms, right? It's not always 10 cool ass people on a Friday night in downtown, the outskirts of downtown Reno. The right downtown. <laughs> Did you say the inskirts? I'm pretty sure we're not right downtown. We're in the right downtown. Uh, I'm pretty sure we're at the beginning of the end <laughs> of downtown. The underskirt. the underskirt, I like that. I like that. I really think we're at like the panty line. We're not in the knees, madam, nor are we in the tush. I'm pretty sure we're at the panty line, perhaps. The calves. Maybe we're at the calves of the downtown. I'm sorry. I didn't uh, introduce myself. You are Ms. Rand McNally? Is that your name? Yeah, MapQuest Rand McNally at your service. Okay, well, you're a block from the homeless shelter. Which is always an indication of the center of downtown, clearly. Uh, dirty, dirty. Dirty. <laughs> You're like her hype man. <sighs> Could have been a dentist. <laughs> right? I was going to teach music in the high schools. <laughs> uh, all right. Two more jokes. Try to leave the geography out of it <laughs> here in mostly downtown Reno. <laughs> you about to throw up a sign? Downtown Reno, fool, break yourself. If I was in a gang, this would be my gang sign. Don't, don't. Hey, who you roll with? Oh, I roll with everybody, dog. I don't. I'm a natural born chiller. I'm on a tri-state chilling spree. Stop me before I chill again. 
natural born children. I did that one. All right. A couple more jokes. I'm in Nevada. I feel the spirit of Elvis Kung Fu. <laughs> Come like along. Oh, see. CC Rider. You ever heard of Elvis? Do you... He's okay. He's no fucking Bon Iver or whatever, in that he will keep you awake when he's performing. He's no Bonnie Prince Charlie or whatever. Bearded asshole. Not you. I'm just saying. Here's the thing, though. Maybe I'm stoned, but I feel like big beards and big titties are very similar. Uh, very, they're very, very similar, right? One, people will just fucking stare at them, right? Two, drunk people will touch them without permission, right? Three, you are forever getting food and shit stuck, right? So when you see a dude with a big beard, just know he's trying to get in touch with his feminine side. You're like a Foley artist on acid. <laughs> Welcome to Comedy Night. I'm your host, Salvador Dali. Right? I'm a sandwich artist. Unfortunately, I'm a surrealist. Who had the lead pipe on toilet? We can't all be about you eight people. <laughs> Fuck it. Let's just all go play pickup basketball later. <laughs> right? We could be the world's drunkest kickball team. I think there's nine of us. <laughs> What's the old joke? Uh, a Baptist, a Catholic, and a Mormon are sitting around chopping it up. And the Baptist says, you know, I got four kids. One more, I'll have a basketball team. Right? And the Catholic says, I have eight kids. One more, I'll have a baseball team. And the Mormon says, I have 17 wives. One more and I'll have a golf course. <laughs> it's funny because it's sexist. <laughs> you have to call it out when you see it. You can't just allow it. To. I'm from a different, right? When I was a kid, people made racist jokes to show how not racist they were. Do you understand where I'm coming from? No, you guys don't get it. All right, that's cool. Right, we would just all hang out and fucking talk shit about each other all the time as a, as a method of kind of getting it out there and then chopping it. We're all still homies. All right, whatever. Right, nobody here has it. Oh, maybe you haven't. You're all very, it's a different thing. All right, I'll stop talking now and tell a joke. I also have Tupperware and sex toys. Uh, not for sale, they're just in the car if you just want to come over and talk about it. I'm really in a weird mind state tonight. I don't really know what's going on. I think it's the altitude. All right. Hemp Fest season's coming up, and that's very, very exciting. I'm looking forward to it. I do all of them. I've been to all kind of marijuana festivals, right? The Seattle Hemp Fest, the Portland Hemp Stock, the State of Jefferson Music Festival, the Umqua Valley Hemp Fest, the Missoula Hemp Fest, the Madison Hemp Fest, the Hemp Con, the Kush Con, the International Cannabis and Hemp Expo, the THC Expo, the Cannabis Comedy Festival. And it occurs to me that weed is the only federally illegal drug that people throw festivals for. <laughs> right? Nobody ever goes to Meth Fest. All right, thanks a lot, everybody. Enjoy the rest of your night. Smoke weed, get laid. Keep it going for Ngaio Bielam, everybody. Let's keep it going for Andrew Holmgren. Let's keep it going for Mike DeBay and me, your host, Jim Bancourt. Thank you, Studio on 4th. Drive home safe. You guys are all going on my Christmas car list. You guys were great. Thanks for making it a good night, guys. Thank you so much.